now let's have a look at the Lama conductor, which is used for base metals and metallic layers like car paints. And it has a number of options that you're probably familiar with if you've been working with the Pixar Surface, but it also has a number of extra ones as well. Now the first one here is tint, and we're going to leave that for a minute. We're going to come back to it. Now the first thing here is this Fresnel mode, and like the Pixar Surface, it works in two ways. It has this artistic mode. In artistic mode, you have reflectivity and you have edge color. And this is like face color and edge color in the Pixar Surface. So here you can set the color for your face, and then here you set the color for your edges. And in the real world, normally what happens is that your edge color is actually brighter than your face color. And so the other way it works is in this scientific mode. And this really works in exactly the same way as the previous conductive lessons that we've had a look at in the past, where you set the index of refraction and you also set the extinction coefficient. And like I've mentioned in the past, you can go to a website and get these values, type them in, and then recreate any kind of metals that you really want to create. So these are very similar to how they work in the Pixar surface. So now let's have a look at what the tint does. So we have this gold teapot here and he's looking pretty cool. But say you have a real world reference and it has a little bit more green to the gold. This is where the tint comes in. So if I now come to the color and I start to increase the saturation here and then I also come to my green. Now what's happening is I'm starting to add a slight green tint over the top of my gold base. And you need to sort of think about the tinting as sort of adding a little extra layer of colouring over the top of your conductive material. So again, you know, you can go crazy with it. I can start to increase the green. And now this green is becoming a lot more dominant over the top of the gold. And so you can see here that we have our gold, which is defined by our reflectivity, which is our face colour and then our edge color as well. And then we've added a slight tint of green over the top of this gold. And so this is what you're starting to get. And so the next one here is roughness and it's all pretty self-explanatory to how normal metals and conductors work. And of course you can increase it to get a rougher metal. And like all of these parameters, you can also plug in maps as well. So let's take this back down again. I'll just default that. And again, in this normal slot, this is where you can add in a Pixar bump mixer to add in a bump map, or you can add in a Pixar normal map here as well. Okay, so next up here we have tail, and this one's really interesting because what it allows you to do is create halo or polished effects onto your metals. And it does this because it blends a low roughness lobe into a high roughness lobe. And this effect in turn creates that sort of hazy look that you get on a lot of real world surfaces that have micro scratches. So you can see here that at the minute we have our length set to 0.5. So if I start to increase the mix here, what you can see is that we're now creating this halo or polished effects onto our metals. And what this is doing is it's adding this length of 0.5 onto our base roughness of 0.1. And I can demonstrate this because if I take our length back down to 0, it actually gets rid of the tail completely. And again, if I start to increase this up, you can now start to see we're adding this polished effect back onto our metal. So if I go back to the default of 0.5 and I say set this to something like 0.514, you can now start to see that we're getting this really sort of interesting polished and haloed effect onto our metal. And the other great benefit of using the tail is it's more efficient than layering two specular lobes on top of each other. And next up here we have anisotropy. And we've seen this in the past where you can now start to control the direction of the highlights. And like I'm going to show you in a forthcoming lesson, how you can drive these with an amazing Pixar bump to roughness node. Let me just take these down, back down to where they were. And so next up here we have iridescence. And this is slightly different how it works from the Pixar surface in that the way that you need to think about this is that you're adding a slight heat treatment to your conductive metal. And again, this is like another layer over the top of your gold, which also has this tint. So if I start to add the thickness, what we're starting to do is add a very subtle sort of colorized heat treatment. And it's going to be slightly difficult to see because we've actually got the tint going on. But this adds the thickness and then this is the index of refraction. But as the render has refined, you can now start to see that we've now added a slight layer of iridescence to our metal. So next up here under the advanced tab, we have a whole bunch of extra options and I'm not really going to go into them in this lesson because I just kind of want to keep this lesson quite short and sweet. 
But the two things here I want to bring your attention to are this surface and motion mollification, which effectively allows you to try and reduce any fireflies that are being produced by the conductor. And the second thing here is that you can also specify the lobe name for this conductor and you can also specify the mat name as well.